we took a lot of precautions when we disassembled this that so we wouldn't have to work real hard uh, when we went to assembly here. I'm going to go ahead and use that same idea as before to line up this line okay, with the dot on there just to make installation that much easier for me. Make sense? Yep. Kind of just prepping the work ahead of time. What we do have is we have this spacer that's going to go on this back side here and these are sized. And I want to give a demonstration to show what this is about and why this is so important. You can see here this number on here. Okay, that's, that's how thick this is and you can buy these in all different sizes for this. Is we want to know that these sprockets are in alignment. Okay, Okay, you guys, you know, we haven't done tires and wheels yet. We're going to be talking about this uh, pretty shortly here. This same thing with chain sprockets. If this spacer was thinner, just bear with me, I won't put, uh, I won't put it all the way back. Okay, but let's, let's just say it was like that. When I hold this straight edge here, do you see how I have that big gap in here now? Yeah. Okay, so I would put filler gauges in there and I'd measure, let's say I came up with 50 thousandths or something. So I would know that I need to put a 50 thousandths thicker spacer to bring that into alignment. And that's on any set of chain and sprockets, anything. We want to be able to align what that looks like. Here's where people get into trouble though. Okay, let's say for some reason it had too thick a spacer. So I'm just going to move it out a little bit. Do you see how both my straight edges look like they're good? Mm -hmm. yep. But it's, it's a false indicator because what I need to do is I need to figure out which one's the taller one because do you see where I have a gap on the bottom now? Yep. I'll just have them hold that so I make sure we're pointing out what you realize what I'm talking about. I'm talking about right here, the gap that's in here. Now, Brock, go ahead and let go. It's very easy when it's just a few thousands. Look how it doesn't even look like there's a problem. But when I really hold it tight to the one that's extending, look at that big distance. Would that really wear out cam chain guides, chains, sprockets? Oh, yeah. So here's what I like to do anytime I'm doing this. I'm going to go ahead and show this example here. If I go on one sprocket and I slide it over, I'll see if I can go this way. Do you see how it hits the sprocket? Mm -hmm. It tells me right away something's not right. And then I could go on the other one and I could do the same thing. I'll go ahead and put this in correctly and watch what happens when... It's good. When it's good, even if I go off the sprocket, do you see how it just wipes across there? Mm -hmm. There's no hang up. If this was off a little bit, what would happen is I'd, I'd come up here and it would hit and I couldn't go further forward anymore. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so that is, a, that is a process you're doing when you're modifying. You always need to just check stuff to make sure that it's right. We know for the purpose of this video that we were just tearing apart putting it together for the practice on a twin cam. So you guys out there need to uh, look at these additional steps in the service manual. All right, you guys remember this guide? Yep. Yeah. Okay, and do you remember which side went up or down? I don't. Yeah, it was a long time ago we took it apart. So let's verify from the manual. I believe the, top, uh, the thicker side goes up. So our chain's going to run across there. We can put this in because we're all torqued and we're all good to go. Um, this is the part that I can't stress enough. And we've got, we need a blow gun. It's a car cleaner. We are going to install these. And Brock, find out I need torque specs and, and which lock tights for these two fasteners. Yes, sir. Go ahead and uh, zoom in here. I, I've saved this so that I could show you how to, how to do it wrong. What is all over this bolt? Loctite. Loctite. Yeah, some Loctite. You got some pieces in the middle or whatnot. If you're trying to take fasteners like this and shoving it in this hole, you are just going to create problems. On the bottom uh, left corner there, can you guys see uh, left corner of the engine be your right shoulder if you're looking at it? Can you see the Loctite? Yep. yep. All right, that's the stuff we want out of there, okay? So here's the next problem. I'm going to fast forward this uh, chunk of uh, material here. If you go to Every Mechanic Should Know This Playlist and watch video number 31, you can see this part in regular motion or the previous video in this playlist too. The highlights are really about how you need to use a thread chaser and clean the old Loctite out of the 
holes and clean to the bolts themselves. Need absolutely spotless clean uh, dry surfaces or the new Loctite will not dry and you're just going to have nothing but problems. Watch that other video for more details. Notice how I'm working away from the workbench and not contaminating my work area. Caps and dies are made for creation. Okay, chasers are for repair or cleaning. Okay, so they take le they're less aggressive. They're going to go in there and just kind of clean out what's already there. They're not trying to cut anything. They're just trying to clean. things they said is we're checking that this lines up and then we have another set of timing marks that we had looked at before we got a little tiny straight edge can you see that in there the, and we had already checked that earlier so we're timed we're good life is good to go the next thing that we'll do here is actually torque these down and what we got here is this tool is labeled it's getting very hard to read uh, this is cam side here. That in place, and then I would take my washers here. I would take my Loctite 262, and remember they said a small amount. Got our holder in place, and it says that we're going to take both of these. And we're going to torque them to what, Brock? Uh, 15 foot pounds. 15 foot pounds. It says loosen the bolts one revolution, 360 degrees. And it says final tighten the rear cam sprocket bolt to 34 foot pounds. Tighten the crank sprocket bolt to 24 foot pounds. And at this point, we could take out our tool. Everything's good. We double check ourselves just for a little bit of accountability here. We definitely torqued our support plate, aligned and torqued our oil pump, aligned our sprockets, verified cam guides in. Everything's in place here to where we can go ahead and remove our tension pin. Allowing that to be in place and this is uh, done and ready to move forward.